for context, my Ito is C0R1 and I don't have Goro C6 as of recording. So that should give you a general sense of what I'm working with. I also don't claim to be the best Ito player out there, but I have spent a lot of time and resources building and playing my Ito. So I have a pretty good understanding of his kit. Ito is a Geo on-field damage dealer who deals most of his damage during his burst. This means that you actually get to see your Ito dealing damage to enemies, which is nice. He's not one of those hidden mains where they're off field all the time. The trade-off is that Ito is a pretty garbage overworld unit because outside of his burst, he plays like a clunky wet noodle. Ito is traditionally played as a hyper carry, meaning he takes up most of the team's field time and deals most of the team's damage. The other three characters are generally supports or off field damage dealers. The core team I recommend with Ito is Goro and Zhongli and the four slot is generally a flex character. The reason you want to pair Ito with Goro is because Goro is the dedicated geo buffer and if you have three geo characters Goro provides extra geo damage bonus. Therefore he highly incentivizes you to run a minimum of three geo characters and I highly recommend Zhongli as a third option because Ito really doesn't want to be interrupted during his burst and the abyss is starting to become a lot more annoying in terms of interruptions and how much damage enemies can deal. Having Zhongli's shield paired with Ito's high defense stat makes it so that the shield is almost indestructible even when you're up against the strongest enemies in the abyss. Zhongli's pillar also has an added benefit of universal resistance shred. So if the pillar remains on field and can actually hit the enemies, they will shred 20% geo resistance. The unreliable part of this is that the range on the pillar is very small and bosses can easily pop the pillar. So I'm just going to quickly go over how you build Goro and Zhongli. Goro can take your leftover husk pieces if they have insane stats and that's what I did. I gave Goro kind of my leftover Ito artifacts and as you can see they're pretty cracked. However this technically isn't his best set. His preferred set is actually a four star artifact set called the Exile and what this does is when you have a four piece set every time you use your ultimate you regenerate energy for your entire team and this is especially good for Ito because it lowers his ER requirement. Now for artifact Stats, you want energy recharge on the sands, defense percent on the goblet, and crit rate on the circlet. Because the weapon of choice for Goro is Favonius Warbow, everyone should have one of these because you get it for free through the story. Now for talents, you only really need to level up the E. That's the source of his buffs. His ultimate is kind of just like another cast of his E. Sort of like Fischl. Constellations? You really want C6 because C6 provides bonus 40% crit damage. I don't have C6 yet, so that's a little smudge. For Zhongli, I don't think there's a very good 4-piece set for him. I would probably just stick to 2-piece, two 2-piece two HP sets and just stack HP. You could go Tenacity. I have him on Noblesse, but... Honestly, this is useless because you never really want to use this ultimate in an Ito team. I'm just too lazy to change this. For artifact stats, generally you want HP, HP, and either crit rate or HP. If you're running Favonius Lance, you should at least aim for 50% crit rate. If you don't have Favonius Lance, because I don't believe you can get this for free, you can always just use an R5 Black Tassel. You only really need to level up his shield to make it beefier. His ultimate isn't necessary because like I said before, you never really want to use his ultimate. It can deal decent damage, it just takes way too long to cast. Now for the flex slot, you can complete the mono geo team by slotting in Albedo or Kiori. I don't have Albedo, but I will pull for Kiori. The benefit of running four geo characters is that they all get to benefit off of Goro's buff and they also all help 
generate energy for Ito. So in a mono geo team where you have all geo characters, your Ito energy requirements can actually be lower. I personally enjoy having an off element flex unit, especially when I'm up against enemies with annoying shields or if I'm in situations where another element can come in handy. Good flex options include Yelan, Bennett, and Fischl. There are times when you can actually even consider Kazuha, even though Kazuha doesn't like buff geo damage. In certain abyss cycles, I do recall having to put in Kazuha to clear on time. And I think it was when I was up against the three Dorito triangle mechanisms from Sumeru. They were spread out just enough for Kazuha to suck them in. And then Ito can just whack them all down at the same time. If you have Freena C6, she is undeniably the best fourth slot. However, not everyone's going to have that. There are possible teams out there for non-C6 Farina Ito teams, but usually you cut Zhongli for a healer or maybe replace Zhongli with Ningguang with the prototype Amber. But you also would ideally want Ito C2 and Farina C2 because in that situation, Ito's energy requirement is a lot harder to manage. And because of how hard it is to... Like, let's say you're, you have Ningguang with prototype Amber. If you don't have C2 Farina the buff isn't really like gonna stack up as much because you don't have that much healing coming out so while it's worth exploring i personally don't recommend pairing c0 ito with c0 farina at least not until a good geo healer comes out goro c4 does provide healing but it's nowhere near enough and it only like heals the active character also i don't actually have goro c4 so that's also kind of smooch. Now that we talked about all his potential teammates, I think we should talk about Ito himself. Ito's artifact set should always be four piece husk. This set is kind of tailor made for him. If you're hell bent on playing Ito with Farina, then you could consider Marisasi Hunter. Like I said, there's a lot of trade offs to an Ito Farina team if your Farina is not C6. I do admit that the Marasasi Hunter is a lot more resin efficient because the Husk domain is kind of terrible to farm. But now it's strong boxable, so you don't really even need to farm it. You can just farm for your whatever other characters you have and then just throw in your trash pieces into the strong box. Main stats to look for are defense percent on the sands, geo damage on the goblet, and crit rate or crit damage on the circlet depending on whatever gets you closer to the ideal 1 to 2 crit rate to crit damage ratio. So you generally want your crit damage to be double your crit rate for optimized DPS. That is until you reach 100% crit rate, at which point you can start giga stacking crit damage. For substats, you want to prioritize crit rolls, so crit rate and crit damage, since they contribute the most to Ito's damage output. You also want to aim for around 130% ER if you're C0. And if you don't have any Favonius weapons on the team, you may even need to bump that up to around 140% ER. Personally, my Ito is at 128% ER with two Favonius users and I don't have any problems. The reason ER is important is because Ito relies on his burst to deal damage. And so you want to make sure your burst is always up. After crit and ER, you want to look for defense percent because defense is actually a good stat for Ito is what he kind of scales off of. How he actually works is when you go into your ultimate, you snapshot your defense onto your attack. Like you convert your defense into attack. You can essentially treat defense percent as an equivalent to attack percent rules for attack based characters. Flat defense and attack percent are not useless on Ito. They do improve his damage but they're quite cope because they don't improve his damage that much for talents you definitely want to max out his normal attack and his ultimate you could leave his e at like level eight but honestly why are you playing ito if you don't plan to triple crown him and also don't sleep on ushi because he can easily hit over 100k damage because ito is in the geo element he doesn't benefit from reaction damage Therefore, he requires much more investment before he starts to feel good to play. You ideally want him to be level 90. You want his weapon to be level 90. You want him to be triple crowned. You want him to have 
a complete artifact set with very good substat rolls, and you also want his ideal teammates. I would say the point at which Ito becomes very fun to play is when you hit around 80 160 for your crit ratio with 130 percent er for weapons i highly recommend you go for redhorn it's a lot better than the free-to-play alternative white blind if you have the battle pass serpent spine is actually pretty decent but i would still probably recommend redhorn just because redhorn is such a sizable damage increase and it also looks really good on ito my recommendation for free-to-play players pulling on the weapon banner is to consider if both rate-up weapons are useful to your account and if there are good 4-star weapons on the banner as well, such as Favonius weapons, Sacrificial Sword, Stringless, Woodsith, Cyphos' Moonlight, and probably some other ones I'm forgetting. If you don't want any of the other weapons aside from Redhorn, then obviously don't pull on that banner. but Personally, I have not regretted pulling on the weapon banner because even if I don't end up getting the weapon I want, I at least ended up with like extra copies of Favonius weapons or like an another 5 star weapon that could be used on someone else on my account. Now I have no experience playing with his constellations because I don't have them, but I can give you a general sense of how valuable each one can be. C1 is pretty much useless in my eyes. You can do complete combos at C0. C2 is not bad. It reduces Ito's energy requirement to the point that you might not even have to worry about getting ER rolls on your substats. C3 buffs Ushi, which is meh. C4 is nothing noteworthy. And I think it only really applies to your second rotation onwards. And so let's say your, your fight only lasts two rotations total, then it only really has a 50% uptime. C5 buffs Ito's ultimate. This is actually pretty good because that's where like all of his damage comes from. And C6 is pretty juicy. I would say this is a very fun constellation to, to have, but it's purely RNG. So you could end up being able to infinitely slash or this could do nothing. <laughs> I think overall it's a good constellation, but because all the other constellations before it are pretty mid, I don't recommend you go for it. Also, Ito feels complete at C0. So if you're considering constellations, I would actually highly recommend you go for the weapon. If you were to choose between C2, Ito, or the weapon, I would probably suggest you go for the weapon. Now for his burst combo. During Ito's burst, the general rule of thumb is to fit in two casts of his E and two charge attack strings. And I'll refer to these charge attack strings as chain slashes. Generally the easiest combo to do is to is right after you use Ito's burst, you start with one or two normal attacks and then you chuck your E. Then you do one more normal attack into a chain slash. Then you do three more normal attacks into another chain slash. At that point in time, your E should be off cooldown and you can chuck it out again. And then finish off with one final charge slam before your burst time's up. For the full team rotation, it would look something like this. Where you start with your flex character because Ito wants to start off field to build husk stacks. Then when you're done with your flex character, you swap to Zhongli, hold E for his shield, then you swap to Goro, you do a quick EQ, immediately swap into Ito and burst so you can collect the particles from Goro, and then you perform Ito's burst combo. So for Goro, you could do either EQ or QE. But I personally prefer doing EQ because it feels faster and smoother. But you are more prone to messing up, especially if you have poor ping or a lot of lag. QE is much easier to pull off and so it's more consistent, but it feels way clunkier because there is a delay after using Goro's Q before you can activate the E. Should you pull for Ito? 
Well, Ito is a hyper carry in a mono elemental damage team. And so you really need to shoot for insane levels of investment before you begin to see the same level of payoff compared to someone like Hu Tao or Al Haytham. You're also quite shoehorned in terms of teammates. If you aren't fully dedicated to kidding him out, you probably won't have the greatest experience with him. However, if you put in the effort to build him, he is very rewarding and fun to play. He doesn't have the highest damage ceiling in the game, but he is more than capable of handling almost any abyss cycle. As you can see, I've used Ito a bunch. Pretty much every abyss cycle I have used e I have used Ito. Oh, I guess this one I actually didn't. Interesting. But then he he comes back. And then I got Farina and then Farina took over my account. This is the highest ranking I can obtain on Akasha, where I have 99-240 with 110 ER. The ER is low, which is why I don't prefer this setup. I think this would be a really good C2 setup, but I don't plan on pulling Ito constellations. So the setup I rock most of the time is 95 to 40 with 128 ER. And I think the only improvements I can make is add in one extra crit rate roll, one extra ER roll, and maybe get a bit more defense. I hope you guys find this video helpful. I hope you guys win your 50 50s. If you find yourself at the point where you want to know more about Ito outside of what the video covered, then you've become one of us.